Hello and welcome to this video which is going to be taking a look at Wave Alchemy's Pulse Reverb. So this is the first time that they've actually made their own plugins. They've been making contact plugins for a while, but this is their first standalone plugin as it were. And as you can see on screen, this is a remake of a classic Lexicon PCM Reverb from the 80s. It's currently free with BeatLab, so if you buy their large sample library of drum sounds, which is how I actually got it, I got it as part of this deal, but it's also available at the moment for $29.95. Uh, it will be $49.95 when it's at full price. You can get a two-week demo. Link is in the description, but we're going to be taking a look at how to install it and having a listen to how it sounds and how it works in practice. So if you want to try the free demo, it's pretty straightforward. Just follow the instructions on screen. It's basically download the installer, run the installer, sign into it with an email address and click try demo. So that should be fairly straightforward. But we're going to look at installing the full plugin, which is pretty much the same thing. So I believe the installer is the same whether you're downloading the full version or the demo. So as you can see on screen, it's got the Windows installer in the zip, the Mac installer, and also a quick start guide. So there's only one download, which again makes it nice and simple. The installer on Mac is pretty straightforward, and the Windows one is much the same. On Windows, the two formats you get are VST3 and AAX. Certainly that covers all of the situations I'm uh, worried about. I'm wondering if maybe they'll add clap support at some point, because that will hopefully become increasingly important in the future. So hopefully now you should have it downloaded and installed. So let's have a look at the plugin in Cubase and take a quick look at activation and then actually get into the plugin itself. Now to activate Pulse or the demo, you can just put in your email. So if you put in your email here, you can just try the demo, but if you have a serial number to put in, then you can put that in and obviously then you're in business. So here we are in Cubase to take a look at Wave Alchemy Pulse. And first things first, I've just got a clap sample, which has come from Media Bay, but it's a pretty generic clap, but it's kind of the thing you'd probably want to put this type of reverb on. Just got Pulse as an insert. This isn't typically what I would do for a normal reverb situation. You'd normally have it as a, an effect send, but there are times when you want it as an insert and it makes it much easier to play around with individual tracks. So as you can see, it looks like a lexicon piece of gear. This for me is, is quite interesting because it's very evocative of a studio I used to work in a long, long time ago where we had one piece of lexicon gear because obviously in the physical days it was extremely expensive. And just opening this up, it feels like that. It's like, oh, this is the piece of equipment you have to be careful. Anyway, um, aside from that, it's obviously a fairly straightforward control layout. We've got some buttons for program size, time, and contour, which we're going to take a look at. We've got input and output controls, and then four variable controls to alter the basic reverb that you get by changing the program. So you've got delay, smooth, duck, and flux, which we're going to take a look at. Uh, we've got mix control and also a bypass button, which is programmed as a, a power switch, which again is one of those uh, kind of nice little touches. It just makes it feel more real, as it were. And in this case, I don't think there's a problem with it trying to imitate a physical device. Sometimes people do that a bit too slavishly and it ends up being not very uh, user friendly as far as being used on a computer is concerned. Before we look at the controls, there's a few things which I already think I like. So we've got this undo and redo controls, which I think all effects should have this. Just come on programmers, just put this in because this makes life so much easier because Gone are the days when you'll touch a couple of knobs and then go, oh no, what have I done? But enough about what I do in my spare time. This is really useful, just being able to undo and redo anything that you find. We've also got a, a random control here. Now this isn't a random control for all the controls, this is a random control to select a preset, which is probably a sensible idea. I think it might be nice to have both, maybe randomize all the controls as well, but this means you get a preset which you like. Hopefully, talking of presets, we've got quite a good selection through here. We haven't got enough time to go through all of these. We're just going to look at a few, and it's nice to have just an initial plate and initial room, so you can just go back to start pretty easily. 
these are all stored as files on your computer, so they're they're fairly easy to transfer to other machines, etc. It's not one of those things where it's stored in the bowels of the computer, so nice and easy. And you'll find out where that is when you go to save, because it just opens up a folder. In this case, it's just in the library, so this will be available to all users on this Mac, which is quite nice. We've got a small menu here, which is to do with registration telling you the version you're running and also the zoom control. So again, another nice touch. We can change the zoom to fit the screen. So in this case, if we go to 150, it's probably just a little big for this screen. So we're just going to go to 125. Now there is one current minor issue with this is if you open up a new instance of Pulse, it says that it's at whatever you've got the last one set to, but it will be at a different zoom. So it it, this doesn't work exactly how I would think. I did actually email Wave Alchemy and they got back to me about it and they actually said they'd surveyed users and some some liked it that way, but I'd prefer it. So once you've got it set, it always behaves that way. But they're talking about having an update for a couple of minor issues that they found. So hopefully that'll be fixed by the time you see this video. So enough of my yakking, let's actually have a listen to it. So we'll just listen to it on the initial play, and this is just on this clap sample. So if we bypass that, just so you get an idea of what the sample sounds like. So just pretty piecemeal clap. And then with the plate reverb on. As you can hear, it's got that classic, slightly cyclic digital plate reverb sound. And all the controls work in the way you'd expect. So from small to large and everywhere in between. And for the same size, you've got times so that we can have a large but short or a large but long. And we've also got tone contour. So you can hear flat sounds much brighter, bass, treble, and finally, full. Personally, in this case, I prefer it on full, but obviously there'll be situations where you will want to adjust that. Now, as far as the room's concerned, so let's start off with something moderately sensible. Room sound. So you can hear that room sounds significantly different to the plate. Much darker. And again, controls work as you'd expect. From large and short to large and long and these controls here. All of these controls are not currently automatable. So we'll come to that a bit later on, but these controls here are, and these really are where the variations of interest are going to be. So we've got a delay control, which let's just set this to be something reasonable. So here we've got the initial setting. And then as we increase this, this is the time before you hear the initial part of the reverb. So 200 milliseconds is the longest. So you can hear that. And often the game would be to sync this to some musical division to make that work as you would expect. The smooth control. So if we turn this up, it's just smoothing that sound out. So let's put it on a longer one so we get more of an effect with that. So certainly that's working and changing that tone. A slightly smoother sound, certainly not, you know, a night and day control. It doesn't affect it in the way that some of these others are, but it's nice to have that ability in there. And what really is nice is to have ducking in here. So this is something you often need to engineer if you want that particular effect. Now, if we keep this here, we'll see whether this works on this, or we'll probably have to go to a loop to get the real effect of this, but without the ducking and then with, so there you can hear that ducking. So what's happening there is if there is a dry signal present, the reverb signal gets turned down until 
that dry signal drops away. So this, say, is something you can set up pretty easily, but it's nice to have it in here, particularly because if you find a preset you want, but this is a kind of thing you often need to do in a mix to a lesser degree than the full amount. But again, it's always good to have controls which go too far rather than not far enough. But that's certainly a reasonable effect. And lastly, the flux control. So the flux control adds some modulation in, which is something we've seen in a couple of reverbs recently. And if you're listening to that in stereo on headphones, you'll, you'll hear that really moving around on maximum. So it's, there's a lot going on there. Now, obviously, you'd, again, probably have that much less normally, but it adds a bit of brightness and interest to that reverb sound, because otherwise they get you know, a bit mundane. You've got standard input and output controls. Generally, you won't need to worry too much about those. And finally, we've got a mix control, which goes from zero, which is all, all dry, to 100%, which is just wet. And you'll see this lock control next to it. Now, the lock control means that when you load up a preset, your mix control stays as it was. Now, typically, when you have this set up as an effect send rather than insert, you'd have it set to 100% because it, then it means if you change your reverb balance, it doesn't change your mix balance. But as we go through the presets, you'll see they've got 50% dialed in. And you can see it's varying slightly, but not, not a massive amount. I'm not sure whether you'll see that, but it is varying a tiny amount. But typically, you would want that to be locked. So what we'll do is we'll put it up to 100%. We would lock it. And then you can see now as we change preset, this is not moving. So this control isn't being changed. So I think most of the time you'd probably want to have that locked once you've got yourself set up and then you were just auditioning presets, etc. And that, of course, includes the random preset selection, which I say is a really nice little feature. So this kind of reverb is the kind of thing it's probably going to be more of a evocative of an earlier era effect. Although I like the sound of it, I think it's it certainly you know reminds you of a certain time in music production. And talking of which, we've got a dodgy a piece of electro drums, which has come straight from Groove Agents uh, Library. But with some dry sounds, and then we're going to just add in this. So again, you'd want to sort out the balance of this by playing around with this. And this isn't typically how you'd use it, but you can hear it's just making this instantly sound like something from the period. And this is just with it on its shortest, pretty much, but with just a bit of delay timed in as well. And you'd probably... Back in the day, you used to spend a fair bit of time with calculators working out what beat and subdivisions were in terms of milliseconds. So one nice thing I think for this would be for it to have a sync mode, while that wouldn't obviously be a faithful representation of the original. It's one of those things where it would be nice to have a more DAW integrated feature rather than it just being an exact copy of the original. So as mentioned earlier, we're going to take a look at some of the presets, but certainly not all of them because there's a lot to go through. So most of them will be on this drum loop that you've already heard. And first off, from the tight section, it's bright metal. So here it is with. And then dry. Again, probably bring the mix down a little bit on this, but overall, that's a nice little preset. And the next one, uh, I'm not obsessed with metal, but uh, Metal Shed. Now from the small section, 
Digital Chamber was another one that caught my ear. Again, needs a bit of uh, changing on the mix control. And from medium, again, I'm not obsessed with metal. Uh, Iron Dome. Now, some of the larger ones I think sound pretty interesting. Now, for Hi Hat Tickler, I'm actually going to put it on a different sample because I think it worked really nicely on as they suggest, hi-hats. Again, this is just from Media Bay, so this is uh, something you've probably got access to if you want to have a play around with it or like the sound of the sample. Now here, you can actually see the zoom issue that I was talking about in action because if we click this, it says that we're at 125%. But actually, the plugin is at 100%, and you can't reselect 125 from here. You need to change to something else. But if you note the size of this, if I change to 150 and then back to 125, you see it was actually at 100%. So that's uh, the zoom issue that I was talking about earlier on. But back to the hi hat tickler sound. So it sounds particularly nice on those open hi-hats, really uh, comes through nice and clearly. And the kind of thing with a bit of detailed production, you know, that'll work really nicely filling up some space. So for chorus, there's a few under here and the use of the chorus is really the flux control. Some of these remind me of uh, late 80s ZZ Top production actually, sort of afterburner kind of era. And then finally, the lo-fi section. Uh, Broken Cassette was one that caught my ear in particular. So overall, I'd have to say I quite like the, the presets in here. They're not just, you know, lists and lists of slightly different ones. They've all got some personality to them. And you can spend a bit of time just experimenting with them. And obviously, some of them react differently to different things. So fortunately, some of them are named uh, sensibly. So you can do that. Although I do notice there's a couple of spelling mistakes. Cassette and Millennial may be misspelled. I'm not sure whether that's intentional, uh, but nobody likes a pedant. Well, that's not actually strictly true, is it? So one thing that's crucial, probably with any plugin really, is to compare it with either what you've got or what else you could buy. So I'm just going to do a quick comparison between Pulse with Revelation, which comes with Cubase, uh, I think at pro level only, but it's a moving target. And also with Fab Filters Pro R, which generally I, I think is probably the, the, the finest reverb. It's certainly the, the reverb I use the most of all the ones that I've got. And it makes a lot of tasks, which used to be really difficult, much easier because it has features which certainly weren't in place on normal reverbs. And you'd have to do a lot of engineering in your channel strip to get it to do it. Anyway, let's just have a quick listen to this. And this is with just the plate reverb, as you can see, reasonably small set up on there. So I didn't want to put any of these other things in here because we want to just hear the sound of the, the algorithm, as it were. So there's that. And now let's take a listen to what Revelation has to offer on exactly the same sample. So here it is on the plate reverb preset. And you can hear it's got that cyclic sort of element to it as well. For, for my money, this isn't as good straight out of the box as Pulse, but you can see we've got more controls to play around with, which we could improve the sound of it, but I'm, I'm not sure whether or not the basic sound is as good on here as it is on Pulse. Pulse obviously is quite a bit smoother. 
Revelation is doing more of the sort of cyclic, particularly on this particular preset. Yep, we could play around with it, but I think it's interesting to hear what the designers, who hopefully the sound designers on this note best, uh, think of as a plate reverb. Now let's take a look at Pro R. So here in Pro R, we've got the snare plate preset loaded up. I've just set it to 50% mix to make it a little more fair. And let's have a listen to that. So this to me is much more like it. It's probably a bit smoother than the Pulse. Pulse seems to have that kind of cyclic, maybe digital effect in there. Say, so unfortunately, I don't have a lexicon here to compare it with, so I'm not sure how accurate that is, but I'd imagine it's probably pretty uh, close to the original. Whereas the Pro R1 definitely got the same kind of feel to it, but hasn't got that sort of cyclic uh, thing happening. I think probably for general use, I'd probably take the Pro R, but if I was wanting to sound like the 80s, I think the Pulse probably has the edge on it for me, but obviously you may have different opinions. Now let's have a listen to just Pulse and the Pro R on the Groove Agent track, which I had set up. So on the Pro R, we are listening to Pure Plate, which is a different plate reverb and is slightly larger. So bringing that time down on the Pro R, we get something that's closer. Certainly my experience of Pro R is that if you spend some time with it, you can probably make it do exactly what you want or pretty much. But on the upside for Pulse, it gives you fewer options, which may sound counterintuitive, but actually I think in this case, often too many options can be a problem because you, you spend too much time tweaking individual knobs. So having just those buttons to choose program, size, time, and contour can speed you up because most of the time, one of them will do the job. But Pro R definitely is my go-to reverb. I have to say I'm glad to have Pulse because I think on the times when I want to have that lexicon plate or room reverb, I've now got access to it and I know I'll be able to go there and get what I'm after pretty quickly rather than spending quite a bit of time altering presets to, to get what I want from another reverb. So one more important thing is what is available for automation. Now I alluded to this earlier on, but if we have a quick look uh, what's available in Pulse, you can see that it's the input and output controls, the four rotary controls, and mix and bypass. So we haven't got access to automate program size, time, and contour, which may be a bit of a limitation. I'm not sure. I would like to have access to it because I think sometimes you want to be able to do it rather than needing to set up another effects track. But it's horses for courses at least you have access to the rotary controls, which you can automate. So another important thing is checking out whether or not alterations to these controls work smoothly, because sometimes you get a, a nice effect, sometimes you get a smooth effect, and sometimes you get something you really don't want. So just playing around probably with the delay control is probably the key one to do, because often that's something which trips things up. So with no uh, allusions to musicality, let's just automate the delay control and see if changing this means that Pulse trips up when you're automating it. Yeah, so you may be able to hear there's some artifacts happening on that. I think some of it is just a consequence of changing the pre-delay time, but also there seems to be maybe a bit of artifacting happening when that control has been moved. So maybe it's not perfect, but then maybe it's not 
capable of being perfect, it's probably a pretty complicated thing to do. It certainly doesn't break down in the way that I've heard some effects do, where they, they change pitch and glitch all over the place, but it's not totally smooth. Whether or not you'd be automating the delay control in that way uh, remains to be seen. You probably wouldn't, but it's always useful to test these kind of things to find out whether or not they do react in a weird and unpredictable or undesirable way. So it's not altogether a thumbs up on that, but it's, it's certainly not a complete end of the world job either. So the question is, what do I think? Well, first things first, whenever I do a review like this, I always try to show off what the plugin can do, both in terms of good and bad, and maybe give it a comparison to something else as well. Because after all, what you think of it is probably uh, probably more important than what I think of it. Because you may have totally different use case, you may hate the sound of lexicon, etc. Although, why would you be watching the video? Anyway, um, that kind of thing is is important, and that's why I've also put it up against uh, a reverb which most people would have, which is uh, Revelation, and also a reverb that many people would either want or own, which is the Pro R, and that I think is considered to be the the go to reverb for many people. Certainly, it's it's my go to reverb. So, does the Pulse offer anything unique? Uh, I think it does because it's a straightforward emulation of something and offers it offers what you would you would want it to do. It's not a universal I can do all the reverbs kind of reverb. It's a specific reverb which does one job or you know a narrow range of jobs pretty well. Certainly it seems to work well. It's available for popular formats. I have a couple of niggles about it mostly which is the zoom control which which they've given their reason to me in an email that this was what uh many users wanted but but it doesn't work the way i would expect it to where once you said it, it it stays that way and it registers it but that may be fixed in a future update and ultimately it's not the end of the world you just have to change it maybe one more time than you you might think you do and if you're not playing around with it it will probably behave itself after a while anyway uh, in terms of price, it's currently available for $29.95. Its normal price would be 50 quid, which is probably a little more expensive than I would pay for it, but I actually got it as part of a bundle where you bought a sample library and you got Pulse uh, included as part of it. So for me, obviously, the price was perfect. One big upside for this is that a fully functional demo is available, as mentioned at the beginning of the video. So you can download it and test it for yourself for two weeks and see if you get on with it and decide whether you want it at the end of that. I think that's a really good thing. I wish more manufacturers would, would do that and give you the chance of testing it out yourself for a couple of weeks with no limitations because things where they put white noise into your mix, etc., every few minutes, I understand why you would do that but also it can be a bit of a pain. And I've had a couple of things where I've thought, you know what, that's just turned me against you. Anyway, that's by the by. As ever, I hope you found this video useful. And if you have, like, subscribe, comment, etc. And we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.